I'm Adam Sussman, and on today's episode of Evergreen, we welcome on homegrown product Sawyer Jura. The 18-year-old made his MLS debut this season. He takes us through his path from 12 years old in the academy all the way to his time on the pitch in MLS. We also talk some bizarre food allergies he has, embarrassing stories from preseason, and what it's like continuously training with the first team. Stay with us on Evergreen. Welcome back to the Evergreen Podcast. I'm Adam Sussman, joined by a very talented and young individual, Sawyer Jura. Sawyer, might make some of our listeners feel a little bit old. You're only 18 years old, made your MLS debut this year. I'm sure it's been a crazy last couple of months for you. Yeah, for sure. It's been exciting. So just so we can get it right, you're from Bend, but you've been playing for the Portland Timbers Academy for quite some time. When you meet new individuals, where do you tell them you're from? Um, I definitely say I'm from Bend if they know the area. Um, I say I grew up in Bend. I put, I lived there, um, and then I moved to Portland, and now I'm living in Portland. So you're living by yourself now for the first time, kind of like a kid going to college. You're 18 years old. What's the first meal you made? Um, I think my first meal was just some rice with some ground beef, and then like I had some nice Trader Joe's green salsa, and then I just called it a day. Have you, have you improved <laughs> since then? Is there something that's a staple for you? Um, I'm getting into pasta a lot, especially on the minus one days. So that's definitely my go-to. So before you moved to Portland, we were talking a little bit about it off air. Can you walk our fans through the commute, what that was like? I know you played in Vancouver. You obviously played in Portland. You started with Timbers Bend FC. You've gone all over the state. So how many miles were you putting on a week? Uh, I don't know, a lot. So when I was in elementary school even, we were already starting to do the drive up to Portland, me and my, me and my dad, me and my mom, um, my brother. Um, we would go probably once a week. Every Thursday, I'd cut out of school early, um, fourth grade, up for the weekend, and then I'd come back down and get back to school on Monday. And then once we moved, we moved to Washington first, and then that commute from Washington to Beaverton was quite a big one. So we also had that for multiple years. But, I mean, <laughs> it's proved to all be worth it and a lot of dedication, but, I mean, it's been great. Did it take any convincing of the Bend School District teachers when you were in elementary school to let you cut out early Thursday and miss Friday? Um, fortunately, my mom was a teacher at the school at the time, so I think that helped a little bit. But I mean, I think they all they all had good faith that it would it would all work out, and it did. So, <laughs> what do you remember about those car rides? What were the conversations like? Um, we ve- we definitely changed a lot. We had a go to Kenny Chesney playlist <laughs> that my dad would always put on. Um, so I think I could seeing that whole playlist word for word at this point but I mean just obviously just spending time with him is super special so was your dad kind of like a coach for you um not necessarily definitely more of a life coach than soccer wise he usually would let the soccer stick to myself and the the staff and the, everyone else um but I mean from a world standpoint definitely him and my mom have taught me a ton I'm sure your mom gave you a good opportunity when you were young 13 years old you kind of diversified your training you went over and played in Spain. Your mom took a leave of absence from teaching. How nervous were you boarding the flight to go to Spain considering you didn't know Spanish, you didn't know Catalan either? Um, funny story about that is, I mean, obviously it's super, super, it was super exciting at the time. So I wasn't really nervous, but when we were, le- <laughs> it's funny enough, when we were leaving the airport, we saw all, the whole Timbers team in the airport. I'm not sure what it was for, but LA was there too at a different time, but we saw, um, I remember there's a picture with Nagby, Caleb Porter, all these guys. So, I mean, I definitely wasn't worried about getting on that flight. I, just after seeing at the time, I like the, the stars. So, um, just super excited. What were some of your fondest memories of your time in Spain? How long were you there total and who were you playing and training with? Um, I was there for three months and I was training with like, there was a, like a English program that was called Tova. So I was going with them and then I was playing with a local club in the town called Siches, and it was just the Siches team, and that was pretty special because all these guys, um, they really like. At first, it was a hard learning curve because I was so I was nervous at that time. Like I didn't I didn't know these guys, and I was in their locker room, and didn't speak their language, and then to make it even more difficult, they were speaking Catalan instead of Spanish. So <laughs> I mean, that was kind of difficult, but I settled in. Did they hand you a nickname? Um, no, they just. They, it was hard for them to pronounce Sawyer. It was more of like a Sawyer, <laughs> but it, it all worked out. So. All right, we're coming back stateside. You mentioned some of the people, Nagby, Caleb Porter. You've obviously been kind of born and raised within the Timbers culture. You're an Oregon kid. You were six years old when Diego Chara joined the team. You're now sharing a pitch with him. 
do you dare make an age gap joke with him? Uh, no way. I think it's <laughs> for Diego. It's nothing but respect, obviously. Um, I think there's just a ton that I'm I've been learning from him. So I'm just trying to want to be like him one day. So I'm just trying to pick up as much as I can. <laughs> We've talked about Diego and how he's an influence for you. Let's kind of get the the Mount Rushmore of Sawyer Jura's top five favorite timbers. Not the best timbers. I'm not going to get you in trouble with the fan base that you love and loves you. But who, when you think about the time from when you were 12 years old, who have been your top five favorite timbers? I mean, obviously, uh, Chara, Valeri. Um, I really like Nat Borchers. I did a, um, I did a on field like walkout with him when I was playing for for Ben FC Timbers. They invited us so. That was pretty cool. I was right next to him and Liam. There's a funny picture, but um, so those three for sure. Nagby is unbelievable, and then um, I would say Rodney Wallace. Just the positional like similarity. So and Jorge as well. Be a fun. A former Timber who kind of has taken your path is Marco Farfan. If I'm not mistaken, you guys have trained together. How has he kind of helped you out? Yeah, for sure. So I just met him this off season. So I. Ha- Honestly, I didn't like I didn't know what to expect this year with getting in like into the team more. Um, so he was kind of just sharing his experiences. Um, obviously, it was he made it very clear that there's going to be ups and downs with like the role we've taken. So, I mean, he just he's a good soundboard and someone that like I know if I could reach out would reach out to him, he would just help me whenever I need. So I think academy life and just the structure has changed a lot since you first started. I don't think MLS Next Pro wasn't a thing four years ago. MLS Next, the whole academy structure is different. Can you kind of just take us, maybe when you're with the U18s or the U15s, what is it like on the daily? Yeah, so it's pretty much like, it's definitely a full-time commitment considering like we're training every day. So it's pretty much five days a week with a game on the weekend, Uh, maybe an off day midweek, but well, I mean, it's really just like what you want to do every day you're in training with your teammates, with your friends. So um, it's definitely changed. I know like U13 it was still like we still train the same, but it definitely just gets more intense. And um, the timing's different with different teams. So like, for example, last year going between the U17s and T2 was like a big switch for me just because these guys like it's very different playing with for one for example i'd be playing with my fellow age and then i go and then i'm playing with guys who just got out of college so what was the biggest learning curve for you when you started playing t2 two years ago um i definitely would say it's just like being able to just play as fast as you can oh just one two touch um you can't obviously you can't get away as much with as much as that level goes higher but um i feel at first i definitely it was definitely bumpy, so ups and downs, but once you settle in, I think it was definitely good. How rampant of an increase is the trash talk from the academy level to now you're playing professional soccer in Timbers too? Because for those that don't know, MLS Next Pro is the league right below MLS. There's guys fighting for quite literally their career, and you're definitely on the youngest end of that, but it's college draftees. It's guys that are kind of fringe first-team players. So there's a lot of kind of pressure on those games. Is it come out in trash talk? Um, I would definitely say so. I think that at times I find it hilarious when a, an older guy than me would be trying to say something to me. And I, I'm just like, come on, like, I don't know what you're doing. You're kind of embarrassing <laughs> yourself right now. Um, but I mean, it's not nothing too crazy. I heard some Academy was crazy. Some of these kids were just saying some wild stuff that i don't know i don't know how but um <laughs> it was pretty funny you don't have to pinpoint an area of the country but you play you've played several times in generation adidas cup which is one of the biggest academy tournaments in the world teams from everywhere was there a certain spot that kind of gave it a little bit harder to you guys um obviously we played club america that was a good game just because it was chippy um palmeras was a very good game that was a, like high level um but none of it was super, super bad with the with the academy. But then obviously with the U.S., <laughs> we had some big battles in there. But. I was talking to U15 head coach Fernando Pessoa a, a few weeks ago, and just hearing what the schedule is like at Generation Adidas Cup, you're playing so many games, Sawyer. If I played you know, 25% of that, I'm out for the next week. I mean, yes, you're training five days a week, but how are you not just incredibly sore after a schedule like that? 
Um, I think a lot of it goes into what we're doing off the field. Like, even though we're so young, we're still trying to be as professional as we can be. So whether that's ice bath, Norma Tech, eating healthy, getting your sleep, just the simple basic stuff, I think that's kind of just our key. And we've been we've been doing it for so long that it's kind of our reality in our no, like normal day to just to recover, repair, uh, replenish, do whatever you need to to pre just prepare for the next day and be able to perform. What's a Norma tank? Norma tech. It's just the the leg sleeves with oh, the gotcha. compression. Gotcha. Well, we've talked a lot about your life in the Timbers Academy. You also have nine caps for the U.S. men's youth national team levels. It's taking you to Europe and the Czech Republic. It's taking you to Central America with Guatemala. I mean, that's got to be an incredible experience just to be on the line when your national anthem is playing. Yeah, for sure. Um, I remember the first time in Czech Republic. It was definitely a surreal feeling. Um, and then the last time was with against Mexico in the CONCACAF final. So just these experiences can't be replicated anywhere. You haven't played a first team game yet at Providence Park, so you're allowed to answer this question. But was playing Guatemala U17 in Guatemala the best atmosphere you've played in? I would definitely say so. It was it was insane. Um, I remember obviously the lasers. That was crazy. <laughs> the lasers. Um, <laughs> just the fans, like our, our the parents who were there. My parents unfortunately left after the group stage, but the parents who were there had to be escorted out. The next day, we couldn't go. We couldn't leave the hotel or anything just because the fans. But um, I mean, it was a super special experience. <laughs> it was so fun. So there was. 40 50 year old men in this crowd kind of giving a bunch of 16 and 17 year olds some great trash talk and a really hard time yeah of course but couldn't understand it so i mean it's okay <laughs> who were some of the u17 guys that you got to play with and look sorry you've played with so many different players at so many different levels can you keep in contact with these guys considering they're all over the country in different academies yeah actually i try and do really good with that um a lot of the u.s guys like we spent like we lived together for like a month in guatemala so we're so isolated that it's something that like when you live with these guys you get so close to them and i definitely like these relationships i keep in touch like um the barca guys to the san san jose guys like super close so when you signed your pro contract and it was january of this year for those that don't know an mls next pro contract that sawyer signed it's through 2025 and then he's set to join the first team in 2026 2026 seem too far away or does it seem really soon um it definitely feels far uh i think this year has gone better than i had anticipated honestly like i've already made my debut and i could have never really have pictured that so it it gives me a little bit of an imp like impatient feeling but it's 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 great because I have all this time to develop and really prepare myself for the next level so let's talk about that debut when you're on the plane to dallas did you have a hunch um, I, I did because it was my last loan and I was, I know the staff here, um, obviously they get, they trust in me. So I think I, I definitely had a feeling during that game just as it was my last one. But I mean, I was just super excited. <laughs> yeah. Timbers head coach, Phil Neville was of course a very esteemed fullback in his day, played both flanks, 59 caps for England. Him as a fullback, what's some of the best advice he's given you as a young fullback coming up in this game? Um, for sure, we've been working on 1v1 defending right now. That's probably my, my biggest focus. Um, so even just the other day, it's just whether I need to bump the guy in a 2v1 defense scenario, or maybe I'm just putting in a tackle earlier and w timing it. So, I mean, just having these guys is like literally the best soundboard I could ask for as they're, they've done it at the highest, the highest of highs. So. What's communication like with the uh, fullbacks on the first team, considering there is a little bit of a language barrier mm -hmm. there? Claudio Bravo on the left from Argentina, Juan David Mascara on the right from Colombia. How are those guys able to help you out? Um, I definitely just, it's more of like a, like Juan, I, I always, I can, he's always bringing such a great vibe. So he's just super easy to talk to. And then Claudio, the other day, I was trying to communicate with him to see, I was talking to him about his ability to tackle. So, um, he was just trying to give me a little bit of advice on the, the timing of it. So, I mean, it's been it's been good. Outside of the Timbers organization, do you have any fullbacks that you look at to as role models? Um, I definitely, when Joel Consolo was at City, I really enjoyed watching him. And then last year at Barca, um, just because some of the passes he could do, obviously playing on the left as a right-footed. Um, 
I'm a Liverpool fan, so I have to say Trent on the offensive side of things, and then Robbo. Robbo's great. So, why are you a Liverpool fan? Um, I had a friend when I was younger, and I we had always watched games when we were little, and I've just kind of picked them as my team. So I've just supported them since, ever since. Who was like the first Liverpool player? Like, man, I'm a big fan of him. Probably Steven Gerrard. <laughs> yeah, that's that. That's an easy one. That's on me. But uh, <laughs> the the cool thing with you is, yes, you've kind of already allotted your four call ups to the first team this year. Thankfully, you got your debut against Dallas. But you're part of preseason in 2023. Part of preseason this season, consistently training with the first team. What's kind of the most surreal moment you've seen out of training? The craziest thing or most impressive thing somebody has done out on the training pitch? Um. I've seen Evander just rip some shots from like 35 plus and he'll just like like put it top corner and then do it again. It's it's like it's really unreal, but um I mean Geo megged me on <laughs> on in preseason in Phoenix. So that one was pretty bad. Um just like I think it was the first session in Phoenix, but it was unbelievable. Just a good introduction, I guess. <laughs> you talked about Evander's long shots and MLS Next Pro. For those that haven't seen, check out Sawyer's highlights. You've got some long shots, man. Four minutes in against Vancouver. Is that the best goal of your career? Um, I would say so. First pro goal, and it was a good one. So I scored some nice free kicks through Academy, for sure. But um, I, I have to give it to that, probably. <laughs> okay, we've, we've bigged you up for 15, 20 minutes on this podcast. You may be better than the average 18 year old at soccer but let's go through some other things and see if you're better or worse than the <laughs> average 18 year old living on yourself now are you better or worse than the average 18 year old at laundry oh i'm better for sure better you use for the sure. pods or using the liquid liquid oh that's impressive i'll give it to you we talked a little bit about it but your chef skills i think the average 18 year old i'll give it to myself just because they're a freshman in college and i i, I think i've been doing pretty good honestly i've been eating healthy so i would talk I talked to Rich and Clay. They helped me out. So, For those that don't know, those are the chefs behind mm -hmm. the scenes here at the Portland Timbers facility in Beaverton. How great is the food at the facility? Oh, it's so nice. It's amazing. And obviously, I, I have some crazy allergies, so they help me out. Emily as well, so it's been good. What are some of those crazy allergies? I'm actually allergic to chicken. So Ooh. Chicken and salmon. So Whoa, it's, a, it's, I feel a, like... it's a crazy one, but I mean... It's hard as an athlete, but I was going to say, when you hear about professionals, really in any athletics, the two big meals are chicken and salmon. Are you a big beef eater then? Yeah, huge. Um, pork as well. I like pork. Those two are my go-tos for sure. Let's go to the next on the list. Better or worse than the average 18-year-old at video games? I think I'm much better. I think I was, during COVID, I spent a bit too much time on it, but um, so I'll, I'll give myself that. <laughs> What's your game? Um, during COVID, I played a lot of Fortnite with my friends, of course. Um, I play FIFA, Valorant, some of these games, but no, I, I'm definitely on the down quad now. I haven't been doing it as much, which is, <laughs> it's hard. It's, um, it's hard when you live by yourself because I have other responsibilities, but I mean, it's probably better for me. So today is your off day. Of course, you're not usually doing a podcast, but what's the normal off day like for Sawyer Jura? Um, usually it's pretty mellow. It depends on the weather. Well, I think a lot of the guys will go golfing a lot. Um, we have a good group. Um, so probably, I probably would be golfing. Who's the best golfer on T2? On T2, probably Blake, Blake Pope. I'd have to give it to him. And then on the first team? I'm not sure. I haven't played with any of them yet. I played with Tega, Tega Hunter. Um, but I, I don't think I can say them yet. Maybe the, Hunter. Does, does athleticism in soccer lend itself to golf? No, <laughs> it's definitely more um, skill based. It's hard. Yeah, I know Liam Ridgewell, of course, mm -hmm. first team assistant coach. He's pretty dang good, but he didn't really start playing golf until after his first team career. So you're getting a, a good jump on him. Last couple of questions for you, Sawyer here. Who on the first team has really helped you throughout this whole journey from the time you were 13, 14 years old to present? I think, obviously, when I was younger, it was just the guys who were the big names and pushing the club to win games just because winning games, getting these trophies makes you, it really does make you fall in love with the club. Um, but now like I'd have to give it to like pretty much all the English speakers have been great. Um, the ones that I can interact with a lot. Um, obviously Eric Miller, he's been great. Um, Eric Williamson, Zupa, Kamal, um, the goalies, James and Max, Trey. 
you talk about moments that help you fall in love with the club. Were you in the stadium for Felipe Moro's goal in 2021? I actually was. I was, <laughs> we were up in the stands with Academy and to our right, like sitting on the seats right next to us was Liam. I think he was calling the game. Um, and that was probably the craziest, that was the craziest game I think I've ever been to. Like when you say these guys help you out, you know, I say, how does that look? For someone like me or a fan listening to this, they say, oh, Eric Miller helps out Sawyer Jura. Oh, Eric Williamson helps out Sawyer Jura. What does that look like? I think for, for Eric Miller, it's definitely like a, a tactical side of things. Um, he, I can always ask him a question where on what this should look like, such as my relationship with the winger in front of me or my positioning when the ball's on the opposite side of the field with my body, like body shape. Um, I'd, I'd say Eric Eric Williamson is definitely a better guy or for me he helps me a lot with the more like life side of things with obviously obviously managing life as a professional when you're 18 is is it's definitely a bit different and he was a, we got him from DC's rights um, and so he's been through it the youth national teams as well so he's been great um, so just some of those conversations I can take and just keep keep moving up with them. Do any uh, 12 or 13 year olds in the academy ask you for advice? Um, I haven't really got to meet any of the, the super young ones who just joined. Um, we have all the 07s who I'll try and like rub off on them as much as I can when they come up and train with T2. But um, I haven't really got enough time to get, get around and see them. So I'm definitely trying to, to, to soon. Obviously, I have a good relationship with the academy coaches. So maybe go out and try and help with the session. Well, so hopefully Timber fans see a lot more of you in the coming years. Crazy, you were born in 2006 and made your MLS debut this year. Thanks for joining the time and joining on Evergreen. Yeah, thank you for having me.